So RFK Jr., there, there's a poll that came out recently that he was actually doing really well among under 45-year-old voters. Um, and I think it's just a giant middle finger to Trump and Biden. And, you know, the numbers were solid for him. He still has zero chance of winning. Um, Ross Perot got 19% of the popular vote in 1992 and got literally zero electoral college votes. You could be looking at a similar situation. Best case scenario for RFK here. But um, there's been a revolt internally with his staffers and among many of his supporters. So Scott Horton here says, Last Friday, RFK's entire field, field team, led by Representative Dana Rohrbacher's wife, all quit. Maybe he should stop taking bad advice from foreign powers about restricting the sacred right of Americans to say whatever we want. Like, for example, go fuck yourself, Mr. Kennedy, you disgrace. So what he's referring to here is RFK leading the charge. He says, Bravo, Bill Ackman. It's time to hold college administrations responsible for the epidemic of campus anti-Semitism by insisting on zero tolerance policies. What's he talking about? He's talking about, hey, man, I declare there's a lot of Hamas supporters on these college campuses. So you should break up a lot of these pro-Palestinian groups, the, you know, uh, Students for Justice in Palestine. There's like a bunch of them. And they're saying, I know I say I'm all about free speech but I'm not for free speech in this instance because I think these are terrorist supporters and so you should break up these groups. You know, you have uh, Republicans who are proposing legislation to like criminally charge some of these people and use force of law to break up these groups. So in other words, free speech all the way up until the criticism is of Israel. And then I'm going to shut my brain off, accuse you of supporting Hamas, even if you're just supporting Palestinian human rights, and then try to use force of law to crack down on your existence to do your free speech. Guys, he's been, he was a leader with making those arguments. In fact, by the way, uh, a lot of the responses here are, are glorious. So this person puts uh, the picture of Epstein. How old was the kid? Because remember, he was on Epstein's flight logs multiple times, by the way. So this is, a lot of his original supporters turned on him. These anti-establishment right-wingers and anti-establishment left-wingers, they all despise him now. Keep going down here. And people actually believe RFK is pro-free speech. This guy isn't running for president to help anyone but himself and APAC. What a clown. Bobby, free speech. The antidote for speech you don't like? More fucking free speech. This is anti-presidential. Nothing can save the candidacy of an underdog who has lost touch with the Constitution. What do they have on you? Being critical of Israel is not anti-Semitic. You might as well drop out. You are establishment, but the establishment don't want you. You talk a good game until it's game time. Somebody, uh, I could, I don't know where the video is now, but somebody had posted a video that was like RFK saying, have you ever noticed that every time in history somebody was for censorship, they always end up being wrong? And then here he is going, censorship, yes! By the way, he's not alone. There's a number of people who shut their brain off when it comes to the issue of Israel and say, nope, that one, I'm not for free speech. Dave Rubin was, he's all... Pff, I'm all about ideas, bro. I'm all about the marketplace of ideas and freedom of speech. And you need to, you know, have these ideas compete in the marketplace and see which one wins, bro. This is uh, Dave Rubin's whole thing. Founding principle of his show, or so he claims. Then when France came out and banned pro-Palestine speeches, uh, excuse me, pro-Palestine protests, he was like, hooray! What happened? I thought you were, were pro-free speech. Now, by the way, many of the people that these guys claim being pro-Hamas, not even true, they're not pro-Hamas. But you got to go a step further. Even if they are, that's called free speech. Because these are the same people. P they've defended far-right people, not neo-Nazis marching and being able to say what they want. There's the famous Skokie, Illinois case where the Supreme Court said, yeah, we hate Nazis, but they have a right. If they want to protest, they can protest. As long as it's peaceful, they're allowed to do it. Those guys look at that case and they go, right on. But in their minds, if, it, if it's anti-Israel, no, 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 not allowed. Not allowed. Why so cuckish to Israel? Why so cuckish to Israel? All they do is get us in trouble. That's all they do. We give them money, we give them weapons, then they turn around and level Gaza and kill civilians left and right and make it so that not only do people hate them more, but also they hate us more because that's our weapons being used. So anyway, a lot of his uh, people are abandoning him, his core people, the anti-establishment right and left. He had a strong base of support online. They're leaving him but apparently normies are flocking to him because those polls were kind of overwhelming, that he was doing very, very well among young people. Shockingly so. But again, I just think it's the Kennedy name plus people hate Trump and Biden. So it's just like, yeah, whatever, that guy. It's one of those sorts of things, in my opinion. But um, totally flipped on free speech, man. That's what this guy does. Hey, y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. 
Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop and watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.